So I was on Twitter the other day. Oh, great way to start a video. So I was on Twitter the other day, despite my better judgement, and as I'm scrolling endlessly into depression, something catches my eye. A tweet from Culture Crave, who I don't even follow but whatever, reporting on legendary director Quentin Tarantino giving his opinions on trigger warnings, saying quote, I reject the word offended. Saying that you are offended by a film is the first response of a very narrow mind. I don't like it, and here's why, blah blah blah. It's just ridiculous to be offended by the content of a film. Needless to say, I had thoughts. I have nothing against Quentin Tarantino, I haven't seen most of his films, but I can tell even from a distance that they're very well made, and the one film I have seen, Inglorious Bastards, which I saw last week, I enjoyed very much. I'm just letting any film bros watching know that this criticism of him isn't coming from a place of reactionary anger, or whatever. And getting to that criticism, one I would make of Tarantino based on this quote is that he doesn't appear to be the most aware, or maybe considerate, at least in certain regards. See, Tarantino and many others online raging against trigger warnings in films, books, and games, and other such pieces of media, don't really understand what trigger warnings are for. They hear triggered, and they think pearl-clutching puritanicals who think everything needs to be politically correct and overly sanitized and just make you feel good. They think offense, when really, they should be thinking trauma. Picture this situation. You have a friend who is a military veteran who's seen combat and who you know is suffering from PTSD. You invite him over to watch one of your favourite films, being a light on the details to avoid spoilers. About halfway through the film, you look over at your friend to see how he's enjoying it, only to see him on the floor having a panic attack in a pool of his own piss because you didn't think to tell him that he would be watching a dramatisation of the Iraq War. You are a bad friend. Really think about what trigger warnings are used for. They are there to let you know that what you are about to experience touches on dark topics that you yourself may have personal experience with. Sexual assault, abuse, suicide, and other words that will get me demonetized. These aren't just ideas that exist in a vacuum. These are real things that happen to real people who might not want to be reminded that those things happened or aren't at a point where they can reflect on it through media. And we should be making stories about these things. They are very much part of the human condition. They deserve examination as much as any other part. But treating them with the respect they deserve means letting people know what they're getting into. If it comes out of nowhere, completely blindsiding them and sending them into a bout of anxiety, not only is their day ruined, but you can bet the rest of the film just went out their head. Whereas if they're going into it knowing they're going to see something that might trigger them, that gives them the chance to prepare, maybe even separate themselves from what they're seeing, and thus appreciate the film as a whole. Or they might decide, hey, I'm not in the mood to be reminded of my trauma, I'm gonna skip this one, maybe watch it another day, and you know what? Fair enough! I'm sure by now some are thinking, well, where's the limit? How are people supposed to cover everything in a trigger warning? Should they be like credits at the beginning of the film instead of the end, covering every single thing a person should be afraid of? Thanks for asking, Strawman. And to answer your question, I think most people are reasonable enough to know when to expect a trigger warning and what to be warned about. Earlier this year, I rewatched the anime rom com Don't Toy With Me, Miss Nagatoro, and at the end of the first season, Nagatoro, the female lead, kisses her love interest on the cheek, signalled by this sound effect. Upon hearing this, I almost immediately had a panic attack that lasted about an hour or so before I got one of my friends to calm me down. Now I wasn't prepared for this, I obviously wasn't expecting it, and probably would have benefited from a warning saying, hey, Kai, this sound effect at the end of the episode is really gonna fuck you up. However, I recognise that my reaction to that sound was an incredibly specific one tied to my unique trauma that nobody, least of all the creators, could have predicted. The scene itself is very innocent, probably one of the most wholesome ones in the entire show, and it warranted no warning. I just happened to have an adverse reaction to it. 
Where it changes is when a piece of media is actively trying to explore topics that the creators know will be triggering to some people, like the ones I mentioned earlier. If your goal is to deliberately provoke unpleasant reactions from people by showing them things you know will be distressing, which I will say again, isn't a bad thing, you need to at least make sure they know what they're getting into. I doubt Tarantino would show one of several scenes from his films that either allude to or feature sexual assault to a friend who's been through that, not without warning them first at least. And going back to Tarantino briefly, in that same interview, he mentions that he once saw a film that infuriated him because it was so unbelievably racist, but he got over it because he realised him getting angry about racism was a him problem, because it's just a movie? Given that this is the same man who's drawn controversy for his apparent frequent use of the n-word, that does elicit a… hmm from me. Returning to trigger warnings, I can see the argument that, say, something explicitly known for or marketed as dealing with dark topics might not need them, because you can assume people going into it already expect something like that. The premise of The Shining is a man hurting his family, something that could easily trigger a victim of domestic abuse, but because the vast majority of people are going into The Shining knowing that, it could be said that a warning is unnecessary. The trigger warning is baked into the film's very premise, and by the time someone sits down to watch it, they very likely already know that, and have committed to watching it regardless. I'd argue that this argument hasn't aged the best in an age where you can go to Netflix or Prime and just watch a film without knowing anything about it other than the name and a poster, but whatever. On the other hand, when it comes to series that aren't marketed as, or even generally just aren't media known for dealing with serious topics, but then choose to do so, I would say there is a particular onus to have trigger warnings. For me, there is no better example of this than the light novel and anime franchise, Sword Art Online. Sword Art Online follows 10,000 players trapped in a VR MMO. You die in the game, you die in real life. There, summary, done. For the vast majority of its story, SAO is no more mature or dark than, say, your average YA novel. It generally takes itself seriously, though it does have some quite juvenile and dare I say questionable qualities, which only make its attempts to take itself seriously fall flat, and taking place in a game significantly nude as its violence. Overall, while I wouldn't call it toothless, the latter seasons especially can get a bit gory, it's far from transgressive enough to cause most people concern, the one exception being its handling of sexual assault. Skip to this time code if you want to avoid this part. At the time of writing, every season of Sword Art Online has had one sudden, out-of-nowhere scene of attempted rape by an arc villain towards some female supporting character. It is no, um, apparently in season three, um, the villain who, um, who is the only, um, from what I can tell is the only major female villain, by the way, um, apparently she dies by getting humped to death by a flaming clown. Um, I, I don't know if I should include this or, or, or not, but just, I, 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 sweet fucking Christ. At best, this is done to force plot progression and the development of male characters. At worst, it's just so we know how evil the villains are. God, aren't they so evil? Don't even ask me about the tentacle slugs. Even if you don't have sensitivity to this stuff, these scenes are a real shock because they come out of fucking nowhere. In season 3, it literally shouldn't be possible due to the established world building. Even Reki Kawahara, the original author, basically admitted they weren't necessary for the story and that he only wrote them in because he was copying the stuff he read in middle school, even apologising to the voice actresses when the anime adapted that scene in season 3. If the series creator felt the need to apologise for those scenes, I think the least viewers are owed is a little warning when they come. Going back to that Tarantino interview, I genuinely understand what I think he's trying to say. The past two years especially, I've really come to appreciate the value of things designed to evoke unpleasant emotion within you. 
Engaging with this stuff has led me to realise things about myself I've never considered otherwise. I've found a kind of catharsis and even comfort in seeing characters with my own issues reflected on the screen in front of me, and I've had experiences that are, yes, very intense and even disturbing, but ultimately, I wouldn't change them for the world. Trigger warnings don't get rid of any of that. They don't censor anything, they don't coddle anyone, they don't affect the piece of media. It's just a little heads up to the audience that if you're going through something right now, this might hurt you if you choose to watch it. And if you don't think a trigger warning is necessary, even think it's pointless perhaps, that's great. That might sound sarcastic, but honestly, I'm really glad you're in that position, whether or not you've suffered anything or not. So just sit back, relax, enjoy your film, game, book, or album without paying those trigger warnings a second thought. Because they weren't made for you in the first place. And I sincerely hope that it stays that way. Thank you for watching. This was very much made on the fly. I just saw the quote and really wanted to get my thoughts out there. Before this, I was writing a video about the horror games Milk Inside a Bag of Milk and Milk Outside a Bag of Milk, as well as a few others. So if that interests you, or if you've just been won over by my charms, then please like, share, subscribe, and consider pledging to my Patreon. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.